that in terms of what I said in terms of running from temptation, I meant particularly, that's a good question, I meant particularly to run from temptations against purity. When it comes to any other type of temptation, what might concern the irascible appetite, like patience, and we're tempted to impatience, we front it. We confront it and we say, no, I can be patient. I can be patient with this particular individual who's taxing my patience. But when it comes to somebody that wants to offer you something that would weaken your will, when it comes to anything against purity, then no, you would run from it. You would say to your mate, like I said earlier, you could say, oh, mate, I, I'm not going to watch your images on your phone. Or, you know, maybe we could talk about, I heard you sort of talking filth, and maybe we could talk our way through this. So the idea is you still want to build your neighbor up and do what you can. But if you see that that's not succeeding, and ultimately praying for the individual, um, I'm not saying to leave that individual totally, but if you see that that person is truly, by way of definition, an occasion of sin for you, and the only thing you can do is to depart, then, then yes, then that is what you should do. With that person knowing, look, mate, I can't hang around with you anymore because you're bringing me down. So you're still giving an admonition, what's called a spiritual work of mercy, where you can still correct the sinner, admonish the sinner, so, or instruct in the ignorant. These are all examples of the spiritual works of mercy. But to allow that person complacent to go along with it and laugh your way through it, no, that doesn't help. You're just putting that person either on the same level or giving that person more fodder, so to speak, to continue acting that way.